In this tutorial, we'll take a look at mutually exclusive and non-mutually exclusive events and calculating probabilities for both of these. So mutually exclusive events have no outcomes in common, and here's some examples. If you're rolling a normal six-sided die, let's say one event is the an even number, which could be two, four, or six. Another event is that you get an odd number, one, three, or five. Well, there's no values that are even and also odd or vice versa. So those are examples of mutually exclusive events. They don't have anything in common whatsoever. Getting a heads and getting a tails when you flip a coin, it's either heads or it's tails, it can't be both. Uh, drawing a spade and drawing a card that isn't a spade from a deck of cards. So a card can't be both a spade and not a spade. So it's either one or the other. So they have those two events have nothing in common, no events in common. Now, non-mutually exclusive events uh, have some outcomes in common. So here's an example of uh, non-mutually exclusive events. Uh, the even value, uh, even uh, when you're rolling a normal six-sided die, two, four, or six. And if we have another event called greater than two, greater than two is three, four, or five. Well, they have the four and the six in common. So those would be two events that would be non-mutually exclusive. Uh, I'm going to illustrate this with a Venn diagram. The even numbers uh, will start with a two, and then uh, greater than two could be three or five. Now you see the four and the six are in both sets. So we put that in the middle here in this Venn diagram. So the four and the six are two outcomes that are in common to both. They're both even and they're both greater than two. So when you have a, uh, uh, a couple of non-mutually mutually exclusive events, the Venn diagram will have some kind of overlap. There will be at least one event that's in this one and this one. So that's how you illustrate um, what the sets look like for non-mutually exclusive events. Now, if they were mutually exclusive, then the two circles wouldn't be have any overlap, like in either of these examples here, because there's in those three, there's no outcomes that they have in common at all. Uh, example number one. A cooler has four bottles of cola, two bottles of ginger ale, we'll call that G, five bottles of Diet Cola, that's the D, cola with C, and there's one bottle of root beer, so R is root beer. You're asked to find the probability of each of the following, so you're reaching in the cooler without looking and randomly selecting a bottle. So the probability of getting a bottle of cola, okay, not the diet, just a regular cola. So there's four bottles of cola, so the probability of the cola, and if you add them, there's four and two are six, and five more make 11, and one more makes 12. So there's 12 in the, in the cooler altogether, and four are cola. So the probability of getting a cola would be four chances in 12, which is one chance in three. The probability of getting a diet cola would be just five chances in 12, and that one doesn't reduce. Uh, the probability of getting a root beer, there's only one of those, so it'd just be one chance in 12. Now, so the probability now uh, the probability of a bottle of dark color soda, so I'll call that DCS. So that would be uh, the diet, the cola, or oh, sorry, diet, uh, dark color soda. Sorry, I'm thinking of the uh, letters up here. So it would include the cola, the diet cola, and the root beer. So it would be a in the four twelfths, the five twelfths, and the one twelfth. And so we would get 10 twelfths. Now you can divide both those by two, so we get five chances of six. Now, here's the, uh, it's called the additive principle for mutually exclusive events. If you want the probability of A or B occurring, then if they don't have any events in common, you just add the probabilities. So for example, if I wanted the probability of getting a, uh, say a cola, or a diet cola combined. Then I would just add the four twelfths and five twelfths and get nine twelfths and of course reduce it. Because they have no events in common, we just add the two probabilities. If I wanted the probability of getting either a diet cola or a root beer, I would just add the five twelfths and one twelfths, get six twelfths, which is a half. 
okay, because they have no events in common. So when the when there are mutually exclusive events, to find the probability of A or B, we just add the two probabilities. Now that's not exactly the case when the uh, events are uh, non mutually exclusive. And so in this example uh, here on the third page, we're asked what is the probability of selecting at random a card from a regular deck that is either a club or a face card. So C stands for club, F stands for face card. Now I'm going to draw a Venn diagram around this picture here. So here's all the clubs. Notice that there are 13 clubs, ace through king. And these are the face cards over here. So the face cards looks like this. Notice that the jack of clubs, queen of clubs, and king of clubs is both a club and also a face card. So that's the overlapping parts. That's the, the reason that these are non-mutually exclusive. Okay, They have those three cards in common. So in order to calculate the probability of a club or a face card, see if I, okay, so the clubs, there's 13 out of the 52 in the deck, so the chance of getting a club is 13 out of 52. And so we'll add to that the probability of getting a face card. If you count them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There's 12 face cards. Now, <coughs> when I just, when I add those together, I'm actually double counting these these jack, queen, and king of clubs. So we subtract afterwards those ones that were double counting. So it's the, it's the number in set C plus the number in set F minus the number that's in both. And so 13 and 12 is uh, 25, minus 3 would be 22. And so we can divide the, both of those by 2, and it reduces to 11 over 26. Now this is called the principle of inclusion and exclusion. If A and B are non-mutually exclusive events, so they have something in common like these three cards here, then the number in A or B, A or B means everything in the both sets combined, is the number in A plus the number in B, but now I've double counted some uh, um, some events, so, sorry, some outcomes, because uh, if it's non-mutually exclusive, they have at least one event in common, so we subtract the double counted ones. Uh, because you don't want to count them twice. You're, you have more than you need. So the, the number in A and B is this, uh, about this uh, the number in here. To, uh, similar for calculating the probabilities. If we want the probability of A or B, then we take the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. A and B is the probability of the, uh, the part that they share, they have in common. That would be the 13 over 52 up here. One last example here it says determine the probability a roll of two die produces a sum that is either a multiple of two or a multiple of three. So we're going to illustrate this as a Venn diagram again. So M2 stands for multiple of two, M3 stands for multiple of three. And I'm going to place in here all the outcomes that are either multiple of two or multiple of three. So multiple of two, for example, one and one add to two, so that's a multiple of two. Uh, 1 and 3 add to 4, so it's a multiple of 2. 2 and 2 add to 4, okay, so 2 and 6 add to 8, that's a multiple of 2. Not a multiple of 3, but it's a multiple of 2. Uh, 3 and 1 adds to 4, the 3 and 5 add to 8, okay. Uh, 4 and 4 add to 8, so that's another multiple of 2. Uh, 4 and 6 adds to 10, another multiple of 2. 5 and 3 adds to 8, another multiple of 2. There's quite a few of these. 5 and 5 are 10, that's a multiple of 2. Uh, 6 and 2 add to 8, that's multiple of 2. And uh, lastly, 6 and 4, that's the last part that's going to be here. 6 and 4 add to 10, that's a multiple of 2. Now let's do the multiple of 3 ones. 1 and 2 add to 3, that's a multiple of 3. 2 and 1, similar idea. 3 and 6, uh, 4 and 5, 5 and 4, and then 6 and 3. That's, that's 9, 9, 9, so those are all multiples of 3. Now, the ones that go in here are the ones that are multiples of 2 and also multiples of 3. So, for example, a roll of 1 and 5. A 1 and 5 add to 6. 6 is a multiple of 2, but it's also a multiple of 3, so that's why it's in the overlapping part here. 2 and 4, so anything that adds to 6 here. Uh, 3 and 3 is another uh, uh, roll that uh, adds to 6. And then, of course, the opposites. 2, 4, we can do 4, 2. Uh, 1, 5, we can do 5, 1, 
And of course, uh, see, those are the ones that all add to 6. 6 and 6 adds to 12. That's also a multiple of 2 and a multiple of 3. So that would go in there as well. So to calculate the probability of a multiple of 2 or a multiple of 3, we would calculate the probability of a multiple of 2 and add that to the probability of a multiple of 3 and subtract that the probability of both, okay, A and B, uh, multiple of 2 and multiple of 3. So um, the uh, remember, there's 36 rolls altogether possible if you're rolling two dice. So there, now we can count these. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So there's 18 in this set. So the probability of multiple of 2 is 18 out of 36. The probability of multiple of 3, now there's 6 in here and there's 6 in here. So this is 12 altogether. That, that's, that's why that's 12 out of 36. And then minus, these are the ones that are double counted in, in these two uh, additions here. So this would be 6 chances out of 36. So that's the probability of multiple of 2 and multiple of 3. And so 18 and 12 is 30, minus 6 is 24. And we can divide uh, both of those by 12 to reduce it to 2 thirds. So the probability of getting a multiple of 2 or a multiple of 3 is 2 chances in 3, which is pretty likely. If you remember the uh, two dice table, if you, you can actually count to get the 24 here. See, multiple of 2 would be this one, so 1, 2, 3, and then these are multiples of 2, so 4, 5, 6, we don't want the 5s, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, don't want the 7s, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, we don't want the 11s, this 24. So you could count them in the table to get the 24 as well. I'm trying to demonstrate here how that for probability formula works. Um, so uh, the probability of A or B is the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. And that's the end of the tutorial.